So for the second film, um, one of the things I want to do is have an animated sequence. Um, and I even have a, a tune in mind. Well, I, I actually recently picked a new tune, which is um, How High the Moon. And I think maybe that was prompted by Les Paul passing away uh, recently. Um, because, you know, we had an interview set up in New York to see him. And, of course, I was really looking forward to that. And um, then while we were in Maine shooting, we found out that he had, had died. Um, so Lenny and clarinetist Brad Terry recorded How High the Moon. And um, there's one, uh, you know, but probably just about 30 seconds of it. I'm thinking we would do an animated sequence too. And it's a, you know, a really fun um, sort of childlike back and forth that, that they get into that's just so fun. You can tell they're having fun and it's, it's just brilliant. So I, I, I'm visualizing, you know, whether it's a, you know, a little claymation Lenny and a claymation Brad or, you know, I don't know exactly what it'll be, but I really want some variety. I don't want, um, you know, a bunch of talking heads with bookcases behind them. So I, we're going to do some really fun um, uh, stuff that, that we didn't get to do in the first film. I really want to try and, you know, I'm not exactly sure how it's going to work, but I want to try and pull in a lot of the art forms. You know, Lenny really drew on visual art. That's been talked about a lot. He loved the Impressionists and he would use paintings as an inspiration and in fact would advise, you know, students to do the same thing and they would be kind of dumbfounded. Sometimes they wouldn't get it, you know. So, and, and apparently he had, you know, he would show them, you know, the music to the tune and then he would have, he had a, a coffee table book of, of art and he, you know, tore the pages out and put it in with his his sheet music or his gig book or you know I've heard different stories but you know he would he would say you know this is how you play it but it should sound like this and he would point at the painting so you know he had a Renoir apparently that he he carried in his guitar case one of his favorites and so I really want to you know to try and pull in um, all the different art forms just like he he drew from every genre and every culture. It's kind of trendy to do that now. Um, it wasn't then, you know. Uh, um, Lenny was fusing styles when it wasn't um, as hip as, as it is now. So, you know, I think it was Ronnie Halderson was saying there's a lot of fusions that happen. You hear musicians, you know, fusing different styles, but it can be too conceptual. Um, but somehow, you know, Lenny can play uh, you know, a country melody and take you all over the world with it. So you'd hear Spanish flamenco maybe or some East Indian sitaristic kind of stuff and then bring it back home to, you know, country. And it was always seamless and uh, melodic and tasteful. And it, it never, <clears throat> pardon me, it never did sound like he was trying something that was too intellectual or... Um, you know, nobody was alienated. You might not know everything that was going on. It took me a long time, and I still don't know um, everything he was doing. I can't because um, I don't play enough. You know, I don't have enough of a of a background where I, I get it. You know, technically, but I'm hearing more and more as I get older, and I still, when I hear. You know, it just never fails. Like those, there's tunes I've heard a bazillion times, like the Claw, and still, you know, when I hear Lenny play it, as many times as I've heard, you know, his recordings of that that tune, or you know, any you know the flamenco stuff. I mean, you still find yourself going, oh, "Wow, you know, unbelievable," or you know, and it sometimes it's emotional. Sometimes it'll make me cry, depending on what it is. I. I find that You Needed Me, that melody, is always emotional. And of course, when I hear Emily, that's, um, you know, the tune I was named after, that's always emotional. And this is a pretty rock. Let's just have a little listen. <laughs> See, I think, I don't want to say the wrong guy, but I think this is, I think this is Steve Lukather playing this. I really like this. 
but um so so yeah so I want you know and I'm, I'm contemplating I don't know if it's gonna work but I wanted you also uh, I want to bring in dance and have some movement and I'm not sure exactly how it'll work I've already already put a call into the artistic director at decidedly jazz works decidedly jazz dance works I think it's called and she's into it she looked at the website and she's into it and has a great choreographer and and um, you know as long as I think the key is 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 just having it be a little glimpse that's that's not going to challenge anybody's attention span to where guitar players are going what is this a freaking ballet you know but but I, I do want to have you know um, j everything just you know it'll always be beautiful and it'll always have Lenny as a common thread in his music but I really want to sort of you know take it all over the map as far as um, you know the way we shoot things and it'll have a reality feel but also I'm, I you know I want some kind of more polished segments as well you know, there's a lot of work to do. These things take a long time. It's hard. I get guitar players phoning saying, when is that second film? Is it ready? You know, and it's, no, man, we have to get the money. And, you know, the process is, the funding process is, is the longest part of it, you know, and it's a drag because you've got something that's so exciting and you just want to get out and do it. And you, you know, you can't, you have to wait and apply for funding and secure the budget. But I'm really, you know, I, I'm, pretty confident that that everything's going to work out and we'll have a, a, a good size budget you know um, it helps that the first film did so well you know the the folks at Bravo said it was their most watched documentary they had a lot of phone calls every time they aired it people asking when it would be on again and um, you know I get a ton of requests for for DVD copies of it um, through the website and um, as well, it you know it won awards. It won a, a Gemini Award and and several other um, you know little film festival awards. Uh, one in Paris, you know, all over the place. So um, you know, uh, it's all encouraging. It, it lets me know that that there's going to be people who care. A lot of people, a significant amount of people, care. Even though Lenny's music is not a music for the masses, there's a lot of fans out there, and it amazes me because we're in the age of communication, I get to see a lot, you know, uh, online. I have people people coming to me. You know, there's pros and cons to that whole thing, the, you know, the computer thing, but it's been such a blessing as far as the project because I have people, you know, searching me, searching Lenny, and, and, and you know, guys that have one of Lenny's guitars or, you know, a bootlegged tape that's great, you know, they're able to find me. And uh, so it's, it's been great in that way. So it's all really exciting, the whole thing, you know, having, having Tom on board. And we, I've actually used two shooters, two shooters, pardon me. And so it may be a little bit of a collaborative effort that way. I used also a shooter from Maine named Michael Boucher for some of the interviews um, for Ronnie, Bob Erlinson, and Stan Winnestock. Um, Michael Boucher ended up doing those. Uh, and he's got a different different style and different different energy about him but um yeah i'm really really excited about it all and i think i'm going to talk about i'm just trying to think i think i'm going to talk about um hope this isn't really hard to edit i'm going to really talk about uh you know per my personal motivation and connection and stuff